Thank you very much, Chair. And my question is to General Ayer. Um, General, I first want to say to you that I'm a child of Africa, and uh, um, I often hear uh, from family members and others that one of the most amazing things about the armed forces is that it, uh, our Canadian armed forces, is that they work during the day and when they're free time, they help build hospitals and they build, help build orphanages and become very much part of your community of uh, their communities. And I want to tell you, General, that uh, uh, it's a real, a real pride to know that our Canadian uh, armed forces are really involved with the community. And please share that message with uh, the people you work with because it's amazing what they do on the ground. General, you heard my question to the minister on racism. And before I ask that question as to how you are implementing it uh, personally, or uh, I wanted to find out from you, in the past, I've asked questions on sexual harassment and found out that one of the things that the armed forces had uh, uh, implemented was bystander responsibility. Is that, does that still exist? And uh, it, how, how is it being implemented? So, Mr. Chair, thank you for, uh, uh, for the recognition, first of all, and, and for the question. You know, I myself have been on numerous uh, overseas uh, uh, peacekeeping and other operations where I've seen the generosity of our of our members getting involved on their spare time to uh, uh, to embark on projects to help out local communities and just really really uh, a, a generous uh, uh, sharing from, from them so I think that speaks to um, the culture of our country if you will and being reflected in, in your armed forces so in terms of uh, of racism uh, bystander training uh, in, in particular, that is one of the many uh, uh, different um, initiatives that we must continue. And, and so bystanders cannot, uh, first of all, bystanders must be empowered to intervene, to report, to do something. They have a, a, a duty to, uh, to do something. So uh, that training absolutely must continue. But it speaks to the wider uh, value that we have to embrace, and that's the value of inclusiveness. And we're very close, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the short term, we're gonna be publishing a new military ethos. And in there, the value of inclusion is going to be front and center because we have to. When I take a look at our culture and aspects of it that has to change, it's the exclusionary nature of, uh, of, of, of some of, of pockets within this institution. And so embracing the value of inclusion where all, um, where we can attract and retain Canadian all, uh, talent from all segments of the Canadian population, where all feel like they can truly belong, truly contribute, truly be part of the team. And so we've uh, recently launched a number of initiatives uh, with respect to inclusion, which will help address the, the racism issue you talked about. Yes, 30 seconds. So uh, I'm really glad you're doing that, but uh... I, I speak to a lot of a diverse a po a population of the armed forces and uh, attraction, attracting them is easy because you go into the schools, you go to the cadets and you attract them. But, and they are very much attracted and committed to the armed forces. What they tell me is that uh, being recognized, being promoted, uh, those are challenges. And that is a lot they perceive. I'm only saying what they say is that it's because of who they are. And so uh, what I want to know is what are you implementing on the ground to, to keep and to retain the, uh, the uh, people who look like me? So Mr. Chair, again, thank you for that, uh, that question. Uh, numerous initiatives are being put in place uh, to, to ensure that we have a much greater uh, fairness and perspective of fairness, whether it's the composition of promotion boards, the composition of, of succession boards, uh, to uh, introducing more of the, uh, what I like to call the human dimension in all uh, aspects of leadership training. So understanding emotional intelligence, power dynamics, um, understanding biases, unconscious biases, and, and better able to, uh, to cater for that. So there's not one single, uh, a standalone initiative that is going to solve it. It's going to be multiple uh, initiatives that are implemented with uh, with bigger. 